Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to Comem, and welcome to the college's first virtual ceremony to mark the end of 2019-20. Wherever you join us in the world today, I hope you are well and safe. Over the course of the next hour, we shall mark the end of the Trinity term, this academic year, and the Glenarmon career of this year's Upper Six. And we hope that you will be joining us later in spirit, if not in person, in afternoon tea, a picnic, and a celebration of all that has been achieved over the last 12 months. We begin this afternoon's service with Haber's great hymn to the Trinity, Holy, Holy, Holy. reading from the Gospel of St. Luke. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who ill-treat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. If education is defined as what remains once everything that has been learnt has been forgotten, then I wonder what your education at Glenarmond is giving and has given you. First and most importantly, I trust it has taught you a great deal about living with others. Throughout your time here at the college, you've had to live with and learn to tolerate and learn to welcome a variety of amusing, interesting, impressive, and doubtlessly at times startling individuals. Your ability to get on in the world will, to a large extent, be determined by your ability to get on with others. Secondly, the College has provided you with countless opportunities to be involved in a vast array of activities. From academic lessons to representing Glenarmond at major national and international competitions, organising a choir of 50 other boys or girls, flying gliders, singing even songs, sailing, performing at the Perth Concert Hall, sports tours, drama productions, and so the list goes on. However familiar the photographs and reports in the Chronicle may seem, you should never forget how amazing the opportunities you have had are, and I truly hope you have taken full advantage of as many of these as you have been able and will be able in the future. These experiences will certainly have taught you much and will prove to be more memorable, I dare say, than any single individual lesson in the classroom. Thirdly, I hope you have achieved. It can be very easy to compare yourself at times with others, but the important question now for each and every one of you is whether you have given your education your best, and whether you have achieved the best result possible. If you have, then you should be proud of all that you have done, of all that you have seen, and of all that you have accomplished. You will have gained, to quote Rattigan's Crocker Harris, exactly what you deserved. No more, perhaps, but certainly no less. As my first term at Glen Armand draws to a close, and this term will have doubtlessly been one of the strangest in the college's history, 
I'm sorry that I've not been privileged to meet you all in person, but that time, I'm certain, will come soon enough. I thank you all for the energy, the cooperation, the support, and the loyalty you've shown the college over these recent months in particular, and it gives me really great optimism for the future. Five members of staff leave us today. Dr. Sarah Alexander of the Classics Department, Mrs. Lindsay Swale of the English Department, Mrs. Liz Lizzie Critchley of Learning Support, Dr. Susan Colby of the Biology Department, and Mr. Jeremy Gardner of Modern Languages. To all, I offer thanks on behalf of the college, and we send our best wishes as they enter the next chapter of their lives. To those of you in the Upper Six who leave today, with the end of your schooling, you cross one of the major turning points in your own personal history, the story of your lives. I trust that your education will act as a guide as you enter the world beyond Front Arch, and that the overriding legacy you leave is how much you liked each other. And as you depart, I hope you will appreciate that what you leave behind is not what is engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. I hope you never forget this, each other, or the events and memories that have helped shape you into the young men and women you are today as you prepare to leave Glen Armand. It is customary to close such valedictory musings with some advice, and so I offer these final thoughts. Value and honour all people, and laugh often at yourself and the ridiculous antics of others. In life, people will treat you in the way you allow yourself to be treated. Your integrity is crucial to all you stand for, so stand up for it. Floriot Glenarmond. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, let me add my welcome to that of the Warden to what must be one of the most extraordinary commends in the College's history. For some of you, this shortened version may be a blessing in disguise. The ganache can be stifling, the speeches can be interminable, and the emotional farewells in the quadrangle can be draining. For others, we shall miss the beauty of the Perthshire Hills, the high quality of the Scottish berries at this time of year, the excellence of the music in chapel and the pipers at the end of the day, and for the leavers, they will miss the exuberance of the leavers' ball. Some weeks ago, I wrote to the pupils to say that this Trinity term would be a term like no other. I may well have been guilty of understatement. However, we do have to take the positives from every situation. I hope there have been some good learnings for our pupils from this pandemic. The importance of compromise and the importance of give and take in living at home for an extended period. The importance of flexibility in dealing with every situation. As the great golfer Bob Jones said, we have to play the ball as it lies and things do not always work out in the ways in which we would have wanted. Also the importance of resilience, perhaps an underestimated quality as we go through life. I was struck by the extraordinary resilience of NHS workers as they went to work day after day in the height of the pandemic, notwithstanding what may have happened in their wards and in the ICUs the day before. We have many OGs who worked on the front line and many members of the Glen Armand community, and I would like to thank them and salute them for what they did. We owe you a deep debt of gratitude. For the leavers, I'm sorry we won't be there to say goodbye to you in person. I hope you've enjoyed your time at the college and that the college has equipped you to answer some of the great questions in life. It's not our job, I feel, to give you the answers, but if we have given you the tools by which you can work out your own answers, I feel that we have done our job. I would like to welcome you to the OG community. I'm very proud to be an OG and some of my best friends are OGs, and they gave me enormous support during the pandemic. They had my back on the rugby field many years ago, 
They have my back on the golf course now and they have my back during the pandemic. You can't ask more from friends than that. For our parents, I would like to thank you for the support you have given your children. The pandemic was filled with a lot of unknowns, which can be scary for young people. I know you gave your children an enormous amount of support, and I hope you feel that the college provided support to you and them as well. On your behalf, I would like to thank the warden and the teaching staff for the enormous effort that went into transferring the classroom from the teachers' classrooms into your living rooms. And I hope that you viewed this as a success. We will take on board learnings and the benefits of this programme as the college moves forward. Many of the other staff in the college have done a lot to keep the college in great shape and ready to welcome our pupils in September. We owe them a vote of thanks as well. Finally, the council put in a huge shift, hopefully unseen to most of you. This was a difficult time for the college and for independent schools generally, and the council really, really gave us the benefit of their wisdom. To all my council colleagues, a huge vote of thanks. I wish you all a very happy summer. I hope you all stay healthy. And my final duty is to hand over to our excellent captains of college. Their term won't have ended in the way that they wanted it to do so, but they have been extraordinary ambassadors of Glen Armand, and I wish them well for the future, as I wish all our leavers. Booker out, Murray Usher and Anderton in. Good afternoon, everyone. We hope you've all been keeping well during these uncertain times. This is obviously not how we pictured ourselves speaking at Khmer, a task every captain of college looks forward to. However, we are delighted we have been given the opportunity to address you all today, even if it is virtually. When Susie and I were appointed to this position last year, no one could have predicted that in one year's time, having a real life Khmer would be deemed illegal. But thankfully, the school has practiced fantastic social distancing by commencing virtual learning this Trinity term. It is strange to think that this is the end of our time at Glen Armand, as this has been our life for the past five years. Our first day doesn't seem so long ago, and yet so much has happened over the course of our time here. But sadly, all good things must come to an end. Of course, this year hasn't quite been what Tom and I have expected, mainly due to the fact our physical year ended in March. However, we are extremely grateful to all those who have helped us, taught us and supported us over the past few months and years. When Susie and I think of Glen Armand, the thing that sticks with us the most is surprisingly not the steeplechase, but Glen Armand's sense of community. We are lucky enough to be surrounded by some of Scotland's finest architecture, but undeniably it is the people who make Glen Armand. The tiny second and third form, who constantly make us question whether we were really that small when we arrived, and the fourth form, who think they have it easy until they realise that CCF is compulsory. The fifth form, who gain their power from choosing the theme of junior discos, and the lower six, proudly sporting their ill-fitting tweeds. And finally we have the upper six, a year who have to suffer through the pain of A-levels only to have them cancelled and Oh, no, that's just our year. However, as a collective, Glen Armand pupils are really something special. We have had the privilege of attending the Melrose OG dinner, which solidified key characteristics that all Glen Armand pupils develop over their time at Cole. The first being kindness. Being in a boarding house 24 seven teaches you that kindness goes a long way. In five years, we have learned that each and every Glen Almond pupil is willing to help one another regardless of circumstances. Secondly, at Cole, you gain a strong work ethic. Being able to work through your teenage years with minimal complaining is a hard task, as we all know that things don't always work out. But it is Glen Almond pupils who fight through the hard times to end up on top, and this is why Glen Almond has consistently good grades each year. It is a result of you, the pupils, and all your hard work that Glen Armand really does flourish. And finally, you leave Cole 
with a great sense of humour, something you have to have to survive the freezing cold walks down to Morning Chapel. As well as the pupils, it is the staff who make up the unique Glenarmon community. As what would Cole be without Mr Draper and his three piece suits, Miss Kay and her hilarious stories, Mrs Davy and her dubious congas decisions, Mrs Butler and her eloquently designed six form dinners, and of course Mr Myers and his play hurt, play hard, play tough life mantra. We owe everything we have learnt to you, the teachers and staff here at Cole. In and outside the classroom, you have taught us valuable lessons that will remain with us for the rest of our lives. We have been lucky enough to live through three wardens in our time at Cole. Miss Logan welcomed us to Glen Almond back in 2015 and we would like to thank her for her dedication to Glen Almond during her time as warden. Mr Alston stood in as warden in a time of need and brought his OG expertise to the role. So thank you, Mr Alston, for stepping up to the role and leading Tom and I in our first two terms as captains of college. Finally, Dr Alderston, although this has not been the way we expected you to start at Cole, we have been amazed by your perseverance through an uncharted time. We would like to wish you and your wife all the best for the future. The next year is filled with uncertainty, as social distancing may restrict life at Cole. However, we entrust that next year's Captains of College will lead with strength and integrity. Tom and I would like to wish them luck and hope that they have an extremely rewarding year. Tom and I loved every moment of our roles this year, even when we were at each other's throats, disagreeing on the seating plan for the sixth form balls. Finally, we would like to wish all of our fellow leavers good luck with the next chapter of their lives. We know that our Glen Armand experience would not have been the same without you. We hope that in years to come, we all will stay in touch, as perhaps the biggest lesson to learn from our time here is the value of friendship. And yes, that does seem cliche. However, how many times have you struggled here at Cole only to have a friend help you in a time of need? Having lifelong friends that stem from your school years is extremely valuable. So we beg you not to waste the friendships you have made. It has been our honour to be your captains of coal for this year, even if it has been cut short. We hope you all have a lovely summer and are all looking forward to life returning to normal soon. Floriat Glen Armand. Glen Armand Floriat.
Let us pray. Let's pray first for this college, giving thanks for all that we have received and learned here, and praying for its future and for those who will be here in the coming year. O Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, whom to serve is perfect freedom, pour down upon this college the abundance of thy blessing, that all who serve and love thee here may hear thy call and do thy will. Give us thankful hearts for all who have worked faithfully and lived generously in this place and strengthen us to follow their good example in our lives this day and in the years that are to come. That our homelands may be blessed by our service, our love and our knowledge of thee. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us pray also for the gift of love for our community and for each other and for ourselves. O Lord, who has taught us that all our doings without charity are nothing worth, send thy Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of charity, the very bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whosoever liveth is counted dead before thee. Grant this for thine only Son, Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And now, go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Oh, 